Hi guys, how are you? I hope you're doing very good. This is the last video of this unit and in this video we're going to learn how to do forecasting uh, for time series using the machine learning approach. Okay, so the idea is the same as, as usual. Basically, we're going to use some training set to fit a model that captures um, hopefully most of the relationship between the input variables and the output variable. And then um, we're going to hope that this relationship stays the same in the future and therefore we can use this model to make predictions or forecasts for, for the future. And usually in, when we deal with time series, we're not interested in forecasting just one time step ahead but we would like to forecast several time steps ahead okay so if we have a, a monthly time series we would like to see what happens in the in, in in the next months in the future not only just one but i'm, I'm gonna say eight uh, periods um ahead in time okay this is called multi-step ahead time series forecasting and there are two main strategies to do this multi-step ahead time series forecasting the first one is called the recursive strategy and it consists in fitting or building one single model okay one single model that makes one step ahead forecasts okay this model predicts just one step ahead. So basically the general formula would be the one we've got here. We aim to predict the value of x at time t and we're, we're gonna be able to use all the information up to that time t, okay? Any information we have from, from the past, we will be able to use it to make the prediction for one step in the future. And if we want to, to forecast several steps ahead in time, what we're gonna do is to use, um, to, to, to make forecast for one step ahead and then to use that forecast as an input to, to make predictions for two steps ahead. And once we've got that forecast, we're gonna use that forecast as an input to make the predictions three steps ahead and, and, and so on. So, so basically, if, if, if you think about it, well, what, what I just said is what is written here in formal terms, but, but that's basically it, okay? So we're gonna be using our forecasts as inputs to, to make forecasts in, in the future, always using the same one step ahead model. So here, as you may have guessed already, there will be some accumulation of, of errors. A second strategy, which is called the direct strategy, consists in fitting as many models as steps we want to predict ahead, okay? So imagine we want to, to make forecasts for eight time steps ahead, then we would be building eight different models, okay? And each of these models will make a prediction for a certain time step ahead. So, so basically, uh, when we fit these different models, if we're fitting, for instance, the, the model that makes uh, the predictions for two time steps ahead, we would be training this model with data that, that only refers to two time steps uh, in, in time, back in time, right? Because when we want to make predictions two times ahead, we only have information available two times steps before uh, the prediction we want to make. And, and in this case, well, this strategy is neither better or worse than the recursive strategy in general. They're, they're different, they have different properties, for instance, uh, here we don't have the accumulation of errors we talked about uh, in the recursive strategy because here we're not using our forecasts again as inputs to, to make more forecasts. But on the other hand, here we're building eight 
different, completely independent models, while and, and therefore we're not acknowledging the autocorrelation that exists in in most time series. So so each of these strategies are different. They they have their their advantages, their drawbacks, and here we're not going to elaborate more on on this but I just wanted to let you know that there are these two different approaches. Uh, from now on, I'm going to focus on the recursive strategy, on the one that we're building one um, single model that predicts just one step ahead. And I'm doing this mainly because this is the strategy that is implemented in Weka, and we're going to use this software, Weka, in for our assignments. And also, now I'm going to give the general view of, of how to approach this, this problem of, of forecasting uh, using the validation approach. Why the validation approach? Again, because this is the approach that is implemented in, in Weka and is the one that we're going to use at, at the programming classes. So the general algorithm looks as, as follow. Imagine we've got... Um, a data set at a time series and we want to build a model um, and what we should do at the beginning is to divide this entire data set into two sets okay one we're going to call it training the other one we're going to call it validation the main purpose of of the training data set is to fit different uh, models of different flexibility and the main purpose of, of validation of the validation set is to compute estimates of the test error for each of these different models so basically what we would do is to to fit different models of different flexibility using training and estimating their errors, their, their test error with, with the validation, which is okay because these models have never seen this validation data set. Uh, with these estimations, at, at, then we would have a, a range of models, each with, with a, an estimate of, of its test error, and we would choose the best model, the model with the lowest estimated test error. And once we, we have this optimal level of flexibility, well, we have to be aware that the estimate of the test error we have already for this uh, level of flexibility is, is not very good, is biased for two reasons that we discussed in previous uh, videos. But the, the main reason, the, the most important one, is that this estimate has been partially lucky in a way because this estimate th this model sorry is the one that we have selected it because it has the lowest estimated test error and because of that it is very likely that the estimation of the test error we have uh, is a little bit biased downwards because we should uh, we we could hope we, we sorry we we could um think that this uh, model has 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 been lucky in this selection process to to avoid this bias in our estimation of the test error we should look at another data set and because we we cannot use uh, the data that we've used so far to to compute a, a better estimate of the of the test error then we might as well use it to to fit another model with with all the data that we've used so far that we we shouldn't use because we've we've used it in this model selection process so what we would do is to estimate to fit a, a, a new to fit a new model using all the data that we've used so far, both training and validation, and use this model to make predictions. If we want to give an, an unbiased estimate of the test error for this final model, we would need a new data set. Okay, so that's, that's what, what we should do. I, I forgot to mention that in this case, obviously, uh, the training set that we use should be um, in, in 
should be the first part of the time series and the validation set which is here um, what I've called in this figure test set or validation set is the same should be the the second part of, of the time series okay as an example um, what we're going to do with Weka is to fit uh, different models this would be an example of a very uh, flexible model because it has many degrees of freedom many variables uh, these variables at the beginning of the equation are periodic attributes that indicate whether the month uh, belongs to this set or not uh, we have other periodic attributes that indicate whether uh, the quarter uh, belongs to this set or not we've got the time here date remapped is, is time we also have a time squared time cube so we've got powers of time we have lacked variables of different lacks uh, most of them five is lo is is lacking is missing and we uh, wh why is five missing well because here we've used uh, an algorithm to automatically select uh, variables and according to this algorithm it was not worth including um, the variable lacked uh, five periods and then we even have products of time with lacked variables uh, that account for multipli multiplicative effects. So this is a pretty, pretty sophisticated model. And if we, if we fit this model, if, if we use this model, uh, we would obtain a, a training error measured as the root mean squared error. Uh, on the training set of 6.3 and a, a root mean squared error on the test set of 57.9 so with with these numbers just think for a few seconds what what do you think is happening here is this uh is this an appropriate model or or is it not uh, we fitted another much simpler model using just one single variable in this case the variable lacked uh, 12 periods we, we looked at this model in in a previous video and with this model we would obtain a higher training error than before but a lower test error so uh, here we've got the summary of the two models that we fitted to this uh, time series and looking at, at these uh, errors uh, which which model would you use to make predictions which one would you choose think for a couple of seconds I don't think you you probably need more than two seconds to answer this question and basically we just have to look at the at the test error right that is what we should look at and we should choose the model with the lowest test error which in this case is is the simple model with a full model we would be uh, suffering from from overfitting clearly okay we're gonna see just two more aspects of time series forecasting and, and we finish the video. The first one is how to compute prediction intervals. If you remember, uh, as important as giving a forecast is to give some measure of the confidence we can place on, on this forecast. And that's what we're gonna um, discuss in this slide. For that, imagine you draw two samples um, two, two observations from from any distribution you like okay think for instance of the of the height of the population you you draw two individuals you see you measure how tall they are and I want you to think what's the probability that the first individual you took was taller than the second one than you took okay what, what's that probability and if you think about it, uh, you, th there's a clear symmetry argument here. The probability that the first one is taller than the second one should be the same as the probability that the second is, is taller than the first one. And because there is two, then the probability of that event is 50%. The probability that the first one is greater than the second one will be 50%. Now, if we drew a third observation, what's the probability that this third observation turns out to be the highest of, of the three. Um, for the same symmetry reasons, uh, 
you can see that the probability would be um, one third, right? Uh, 33%. Um, and similarly, if you if we had a sample of n observations, the probability that the next observation will be the largest is one divided by m plus one, right? Because there there would be m plus one elements. Each of them has the same probability of being the largest. So we're focusing on one in particular, which is the last one we we have drawn, and and then the probability of that one being the largest would be one divided by m plus one, and the same would be the the same argument would apply to compute the probability of being the the smallest of all. So so basically, if the probability or with probability n minus one divided by m plus one, which is the same as one minus one divided by m plus 1 minus 1 divided by m plus 1 with this probability the new observation the, the observation m plus 1 would fall between the sample maximum and the sample minimum of the sample we've observed so far right because with that probability this new observation will not be the maximum nor the minimum of, of the sample and therefore it would be in between the minimum and the maximum. So uh, if we apply this reasoning to errors, to, to errors, we can compute a prediction interval and, and it works as follow. The idea is to, to look at say 19 errors, the last 19 errors that I've, I've had when when making my my predictions and we compute the maximum uh, that i'm going to call capital m and the minimum which i'm going to call um, lowercase m of these 19 errors so we know that with probability m minus 1 divided by m plus 1 which in this case is 90 percent with probability 90 percent the next error i get the 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 20th error would be in the interval lowercase m capital uh, m in the interval of the minimum of all the errors I have observed so far and the maximum of all the errors I've observed so far uh, obviously we're assuming that all these errors come from the same distribution that may be true or not but in any case it's it's an assumption we should be clear about and if we wanted, for the same reasoning, uh, if we wanted a 95% prediction on prediction interval, then we would need to look at uh, the previous 39 errors because 39 minus 1 divided by 39 plus 1 is, is 95%. So this is how we would build prediction intervals. And the last aspect I, I just want to mention about time series forecasting using the machine learning approach is that there there are uh, methods that um, have been designed to analyze and forecast multiple time series uh, that are related at, at the same time like for instance if you wanted to forecast the sales of of red wine and white wine these are time series that are related and and there is a strategy to to tackle this problem in a um, in a global way uh, acknowledging the dependencies that may exist between these different time series so with this we finish the um, the unit on on time series analysis and forecasting using machine learning i hope it's reasonably clear i know i've 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 been a little bit too quick uh, in some explanations but you, you know uh, you are more than welcome to email me and and we can meet and i'll try to answer all the questions you you may have in any case thank you so much for watching this video and and keep it up guys you, you you're doing great so I'll, I'll i'll see you soon okay bye bye cheers